Welcome to the Agent and the Fan Podcast. My name is Chris Leibel. I'm here with my broadcast partner, Lou Columna. Lou, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am doing okay. I just got back from Las Vegas. I, I was at a, uh, a big wedding and uh, had a great time. And nice. uh, it's been an exciting... Yeah, I've had a lot of stuff going on this week. I was at a charity dinner on Monday night for the Bonacani Fund, the Miami Project, which is a really great charity and a great um, event every year. A lot of um, uh, athletes are honored. Pitbull was there, got honored. Gloria <laughs> Stefan was the host. Gloria Stefan was the host. Uh, there was a lot of athletes there. Jim Tomei was there getting honored. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was it was really good. Larry Little from the uh, undefeated Dolphins uh, got honored and uh, – uh, Neo performed. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a really, yeah, it was a nice event, and that's uh, it's a great organization for anybody, um, you know, looking to get behind something. It's uh, it's to, they're trying to cure paralysis. More, uh, it's the the Miami Project, um, Bonacani Foundation. So yeah. anyway, that's enough about me, Lou. How about yourself? Yeah, I, I know you're excited. The Jets had a big win. They beat the Eagles. Uh, this past Sunday, it's the fir- one of the craziest stats I've ever heard. They've been around forever. They've been around for like 60 years. It's the first time the Jets have ever beat the Eagles. They were 0 for 12, which it's crazy. I've only played them 12 times in all those years. But they won. They beat the Eagles. They, somehow they won. They were missing their starting cornerbacks. They were missing their two best offensive linemen. And they beat the undefeated Eagles. It was amazing. And listen, I – I did not know. I had a good feeling about the game because their defense is so good. It's so solid. And I feel and I felt that Zach has been playing well, you know, the last three games. You know, he still has a ways to go, right? He's not there yet. He's not, you know, elite, but he's competent now. But I just had this gut feeling. I didn't know it was going to be the game the way it turned out. But their defense, man, has been lights out. Um, it really shows how well coached this team is, you know, to me. Because and and Robert Sala deserves, deserves a lot of credit um, for this. But I'm, I'm excited, man. I think. And the, the interesting thing I, I was I was talk I was discussing earlier is if Zach if the, if Zach keeps him, you know, within playoff, you know, reach or even playoff bound that means he's playing well, right? So what do you – I mean, obviously, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. He he wouldn't have played for four months. Do you give him the keys of the car at, at that point? Like that – I mean, listen. Well, I think for, it depends on his health. Play. I think healthy Aaron Rodgers comes back and plays if, if somehow he could have a miracle. And, by the way, it can be done. I remember Terrell Suggs had a – had the same injury and he came Correct. back in, in like three, three or so months. If yeah, I remember yeah. correctly. Um, but look, I think the jets are doing a great job. The defense is obviously outstanding. The Williams brothers are, are phenomenal. Um, CJ Mosley, those guys who stepped in and stepped up um, in the, in the uh, back end of the defense and the secondary fantastic job. But I just say Zach Wilson has done a great job ever since it looked like it was the doomsday break glass when Joe Namath turned on him, the the most positive (laughs) person ever turned on him. But I'm going to say this, Zach Wilson's done a great job, but you got to give a lot of credit to Nathaniel Hackett, who has done an awesome job of putting him in position to do well. This guy's game planning has been elite and he's made it much easier for Zach. And Zach has, I think built his confidence because Nathaniel Hackett, has done such a great job of, um, you know, making high percentage plays and, um, you know, just, you know, instead of, you know, going crazy with things, just simplified things for him, made it easier. And I think for Zach, look, anybody who has two eyes watches Zach Wilson throw a football knows the guy has a lot of talent. But what's been missing? What's the issue? To me, and I'll talk about this, whatever, Look, I just heard Aaron Rodgers talking about Jordan Love and saying, you know, don't panic, hit the panic button on Jordan Love. He had two great games. He struggled since then. But look, I'm old school. I know that nowadays it's the pressure is is there to get these guys and put them in the lineup right away. And you you uh, you you know you spend a high draft pick on a guy you want to get use them and and everything. But look, these guys 
that kid did not play a lot of college football. Okay, Brock Purdy played four years, never missed a game. Okay, Brock Purdy knows the game inside and out. I mean, he's fit in, and you know and they got a nice the system game. there. He's a, yeah, he's got the right system for him. You know, I just heard that Dan Orlovsky was saying that if Brock Pur- if Mac Jones was in San Francisco, he would he would look like Brock Purdy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know about that, but <clears throat> but what I do know is that in the, the way the game is now. They rushed to get these guys on the field. I don't think Zach was ready to come in and be the starter right away, just like Tra- uh, Travis Darno wasn't wasn't when when he came in. So, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, just like uh, Sam Darnold. I'm sorry, I'm like Travis Darno, like just like, just like <laughs> Sam Darnold was yeah. wasn't when he was came in. He hadn't but played I, enough. I, they don't play yeah. a lot of college. They don't play a lot of college football these days. These guys, Mitchell Trubisky, all these guys. But look at the guys who sit behind the guys, and you know, even Patrick Mahomes the most gifted thrower we've had in the league and in, in who knows how long <clears throat> he's had a full year um, and, and kind of learned the trade and watched and viewed and all those things. So to me, Zach, um, you know, uh, is, is, is maturing and Nathaniel Hackett's doing a fantastic job with him. The defense speaks for itself, but you got to give credit to Nathaniel Hackett who took a lot of abuse from uh, Sean Payton. And obviously that whole controversial thing with Aaron yeah. Rodgers. So, yeah. Um, no, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, Nathaniel deserves a lot of credit. Um, Zach, really, and if, if anyone, if anyone's listened to previous podcasts, I just had a feeling about Zach. Not that he was going to be like a superstar, but I just he was better than what he had shown. That was all I was saying. That was all I was saying. He's yeah. better than what he has shown, and I, I really kind of like the progression um, where he's going. And we just got, we just got to keep it. Keep it going. I mean, we got the Giants, you know, after the bye, uh, the, the schedule softens up a little bit, gives us a little bit of breathing room, assuming we don't take anybody for granted. Uh, because in this league, as as you saw with, with the Jets themselves, any given Sunday, anybody could win. You know what I mean? So I think that really, for me, is going to be the key. Um, I love the way that, you know, we got, you know, we got to get, you know, for me, the biggest thing is we have to, you can't go and play a game of just field goals. There's going to come a point in time where Zach's going to have to win you a game. He's going to have to throw for some touchdowns. You can't go in the red zone and keep coming up with, you know, with field goals. It's just, you're not going to win that way. Long term. Well, listen, the Jets defense is going to have a lot in a lot of games like that. So um, it's been working and uh, you know, it's good for the Jets. Now the other side, the giants, uh, these guys have had a real struggle. But I really thought they had a did a great job on um, Sunday night. Um, yeah, they got holes. They got holes. Yeah, they did. They did. I mean, obviously the bad call at the end, but the fact that they hung with the you know the Bills team that they did as banged up as they as they've been, especially on the offensive line. But the Bills have a, have a, a pretty strong. Um, you know, they've had their they've had their share of injuries. State Tre'Davious White, Matt Milano, guys like that have gone down which has been tough on the bills. But, um, you know, when you're talking about the defensive line that they have with Ed Oliver and, and uh, my guy, Gregory Rousseau um, and, and Von Miller, I mean, coming back now, I mean, uh, the fact that the giants have been able to do what they did um, and, and, and keep um, Tyrod Taylor upright and get him going with, with obviously Daniel Jones also out at Saquon coming back, I think was a big lift for them too. Oh, but, no but the Giants, um, you know, they battled, and the fact that they didn't quit shows me something about that team. And, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. But, um, you know, Tyrod Taylor is a pretty good backup quarterback in this league, and he's been a starter himself. So, um, you know, he's not a uh, slouch in any, um, uh, you know, aspect of, of his game. So, Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think that they – for me, we're, we're going to take a step back this year. I mean, last year was so – everything fell in place yes. so well. And they had a, they've had a tough schedule. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't see one in five. I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, see, I didn't see one in five. But I did see them, you know, regressing a little bit. You know, you know the quarterback play, you know, how – Listen, if you're getting knocked down every single play, I mean, he really hasn't had a chance. But you know, yeah, and the fact it. that you lost, you know, you're losing some of your top linemen, and then they lost more guys during the game, yeah, and then yeah. they have Justin Pugh straight off the couch. 
Um, so that uh, I don't know if you saw that, but yeah, no, I saw, yeah. yeah, I saw that. But that that's really what's killed him. You know, like if if Daniel Jones can't be upright and throw the ball, he's getting sacked eleven times. No, Daniel Jones can can run, but he, you know he can't hide. He's running for so. his life, <laughs> he's running yeah. for his life essentially. Yeah. But you know, I still think. Listen, they're 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 done for the year, right? But at least you know what that, and that's what scares me about them after the bye week with the Jets, because this is going to be their Super Bowl. This is going to be their game. Yeah. I, and, listen, I never say anybody's done for the year, but obviously uh, it's doesn't. They're not in a great position right now. But who knows? You never know. Sometimes these teams get on a run, and um, sometimes things you know don't go the way. Look at some of the other games. The 49ers lost to the Browns, and Browns defense is playing the best. Some of the best defense in in I mean, a long time. I mean. Uh, that's another one, Jim Schwartz. I mean, this guy has yeah, done some kind of job with that defense, and and look what they did to the Niners. Now, don't forget though, the Niners lost um, Debo and McCaffrey. Yeah. You know, in the first, basically in the first half of that game, and you know, the Niners without those two are 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 an okay team, but they're not. They don't have the weapons that they normally have. I mean, Kittle's great, Ayuk. Um, you know, they got a couple of good backup running backs, but. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? You know, listen. In in this league, everybody plays hurt. You know, come week ten, everybody's hurt, right? At at some at some level. No, no question. Um, And listen, you know, you you have players on both teams being lost to injury. So I I don't want to say that it's it's a it's an even swap, but you know, everyone deals with injuries, right? And, And it's how you overcome them. You know, the practice squad guys how they practice. And no, you know, I, I listen, at the end of the day, it comes yeah. down to, you know, your player personnel, the people who run your teams, um, you know, who is going to find these, you know, these diamonds in the rough or these, you know, who's going to draft Brock Purdy in the last round? Who's going to, you know, sign uh, the kid that made the interception off Jalen Hurts as an undrafted free yeah, agent yeah. who the Jets brought in and couldn't, like they they didn't they couldn't cut them. They were afraid that they were going to lose something. <laughs> it's yeah. a little player. So like, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, these these front offices, um, you know, this is where it comes in, and the and this is why these teams with these great personnel um, departments, these are the teams that are going to win because they're building depth and they're building um, strength in 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 certain areas that that uh, you know that's. That makes differences on the field. So, no, for sure. And listen, and the, and the parity in the NFL right now is is really really more so than I've ever seen it before. Yeah. But well, look at you know. I mean, you got the Niners and Eagles lost this week. I think everybody thinks that they're two of the best teams with the Chiefs. Um, but even the Chiefs, they've been kind of you know, they haven't been blowing people away. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're an interesting team too because you know a couple of years ago they got rid of Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is arguably the best player. You know, the best player in the league right now and you know they don't have a lot of weapons they have Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey obviously is always um you know putting up great Kelsey numbers hasn't, Kelsey hasn't been really no. well he's also been a little banged up he's had a couple he's little up, nagging yeah. injuries he's playing through them but but he's not you know Tyreek Hill is explosive you know he, they don't have an explosive guy in that offense their running backs have been solid but and steady but they haven't been you know you know so so they're interesting too, but really, once you get past the first few teams, the Dolphins are interesting, obviously. But then the Bills, you know, put them in their place. But then the Bills lost to the Jaguars <laughs> in London, and the Bills struggled and really should have lost to a down and out Giants team. So yeah. it's hard to figure out, but that's what makes the NFL great, and that's what makes uh, every Sunday exciting and fun. Speaking of exciting and fun, let's transition to the baseball playoffs, Ooh. which has been very interesting and fun, right. obviously. We've had a couple of interesting um, series already, and now here we are in the uh, LCS, one step away from the World Series. Oh, it's sure, just yeah. like everybody predicted. The Dodgers and Braves <laughs> are, are going at it. No, no, it's crazy. I mean, you got the Phillies are doing it again, and as we stand here, they're they're in the driver's seat, and the Diamondbacks had just you know, stunning everybody left and right, but now oh, the Phillies yeah. might have met their number, but now they're going back home. So that's an exciting, exciting series it for me. Is, the so- Phillies, you know, somebody asked me today, like, what, what's the difference? Like, 
how were the Phillies doing this, you know, back to back years. And to me, it's, it's, you know, they've done a great job in putting the right people in place and bringing in the right people. And these guys are stepping up at the right time. You know, they weren't anywhere near the Braves in the post in the, in the regular season, but in the postseason, for whatever reason, they have been able to dominate these games and, it's a lot. It's an interesting cast of characters because it's not your when everybody was going, oh, my God, the Braves and look at all the records they are setting in every game with the home runs and all this stuff. Yeah. But it didn't. It means nothing. It means nothing. It didn't, yeah, it didn't do anything. And, and you know, um, Matt Olson had a, such a great year and hit all these home runs. And Ronald Acuna, who's, you know, my former client, um, you know, who I love to death and had, had an MVP season is probably going to get the MVP award. But Ron, you know, Ronald and Matt Olson really, really struggled in the in the playoffs, and and you know, it just wasn't it wasn't there for them this year again. And you know, similarly with the Dodgers, you know, the Dodgers another team that just dominates the regular season, and then for whatever reason, and the biggest, you know, if you look at you know, look at well, Clayton Kershaw. Well, that, I was just going to get to that, right? Yeah, they they won a. I don't want to say smoke and mirrors because you don't win a hundred games smoke and mirrors. But it wasn't, to me, a dominant 100-win team. And when you start Clayton Kershaw at a game one, to me, that tells me a lot. Listen, did I – Well, it's I interesting. That, six runs? I don't think he was going to go up six runs, right? But he wasn't going to give you six, seven innings. And no, me, and he hasn't, he hasn't done that at all. Like, you know, the biggest difference, <clears throat> two names that, to me that come to mind, three names that come to mind for me is – <clears throat> Nathan Avaldi, Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola. You need studs. At, at, yeah, at, you know. But at the front. no, no question. The Dodgers have definitely as much as much as they have. They have a huge payroll, and seems to, seems like the Dodgers have a very like. It's, there's not. There's it's a, it's a roster full of stars, one to twenty five, but but they don't have. You know, you said Zach Wheeler. I mean. Is just, I mean, that was one of the Mets fans' biggest lament. I, I, I'm gonna, I said it at the time. He's always been one of my favorite pitchers. The Mets could have had him for pennies on the dollar if they would have offered him a good deal. I'm sure he would have taken it and never even gone to free agency. Um, but they, they didn't do that at the time. And boy, oh boy, are they paying for it now? Nola's fantastic. Eovaldi's another guy who I've always loved. Has great stuff. What he's doing with Texas, unbelievable. Um, but look at Texas. They certainly seem like a team of destiny this year, um, especially um, after, you know, they, they kind of tossed it away in the, at the end of the regular season. They had it won, and then they – but again – How many they, times have you seen that, though? How no, many times have you seen that in your life? No, When they true. lost three in a row to, to, to Houston, I said to myself, they're going to beat – Houston, with if they if they meet him in the well, playoffs, it's the interesting him. thing and the subject I think that's going to be interesting. What happens this off season and who talks about what and what happens? I think the real interesting thing is going to be like how are they are they going to change the playoff format? Because it seems like the teams that don't play in the first round lose whatever momentum <clears throat> they had, and whether it's the Orioles, the Braves, the Dodgers, um, these teams. Um, they had, you know, they had such great regular seasons and here they are sitting at home now watching the teams that didn't. And we've seen that, you know, in this year, in, you know, in the, in the, you know, wild card wild era, card, yeah, yeah. you know, and that goes for every sport it goes for football too, where these teams, for some reason, it's usually the giants in both baseball and football Cardinals have done it a bunch of times now, you know, where these teams just emerge out of nowhere and just get hot at the right time. Um, but you know, again, when but what? But see, but well, what's the answer, right? Because that's the question. You know, because you think you're giving them a break, you're giving them a days off and rest, but it hasn't translated onto the field. But even even you know, when I was arguing about that additional playoff team, which I didn't like, I didn't like the addition of another playoff team because to me, you you know, in, in of any sport, you're diluting base, you know, the regular season in in baseball. Right. And I said to myself, if you're on a hot streak and you're whatever team it is, you're on a hot streak and you're playing so well. And like, oh, by the way, you're going to have five days off. Does that really help me? 
Well, that's the thing. It, it, it's proven that yeah. it's not really helping them. So, and so what do you do? Like, what's the incentive? I don't know. That's, you know. that's the question. But the thing is, look, when my dad was a kid, <laughs> there was the National League and the American League. And the National <laughs> League winner won the regular season, played in the World Series, and the American League it's even that won the World Series, and, played, and they played in the World Series. And so at the end of the day, that was that was what it was. You know, in 1969, I think, yeah. is when it they went to divisional play, play yeah. and they had the division series, and I think that added something. Once you threw the wild cards in, that just threw everything off, and it just – it definitely, um, you know, has put a, a crazy twist on the game. And I think it is exciting and fun, and it certainly gives them a lot more games and playoffs and a lot more revenue is coming in, but, you know – it definitely doesn't necessarily mean the best team is going to win the world series every year. And we're already, we already know that's not the case this year because you know, the Phillies weren't the best team and the, the, Di- the diamondbacks weren't the best team and the, the Rangers weren't the best team and the Astros were as close as we're going to get to the best team, but they even had to back and you know, kind of back in it. Well, I mean, they won, but you know, oh, well, the Rangers they, falling they apart to a really, the end. really, really hot streak to get in. Yeah. But this is to me, this is what, and I love baseball, like you love baseball, but I also feel sometimes that this is where, you know, the powers that be feel, you know, want to make, create and make baseball like the NFL. The NFL is the NFL. Like, that's what's so frustrating to me about these playoffs and, and you know, the additional teams and then having to, the, you know, the buy the buy means nothing in baseball it means absolutely nothing, you know, because well, listen. If, if, if you listen, unless you got a guy who, you know, you, you know, a stud pitcher who was kind of struggling at the end and you, you well, he, listen, you know, Luke, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with all that because for somebody who's traveled with, the, with major league teams, like, you know, the travel is certainly a wear and tear thing. Um, you know, um, yeah, maybe you're, you're a little Texas, less right. You're in Texas. <laughs> what is you taking a plane for half an hour to get? You know what I mean? No, but I'm, but I'm saying just in general, in yeah. in, in you, we're, we're not. I'm not talking about any specifics of this year, but I'm just saying like you travel, uh, you play 162 games, 182 days, not counting the spring training. Okay, you're on buses and planes and trains, uh, you know, all around you know the country. You never stop. It never slows down. People don't under again another thing like uh, you know the glamorous life of a baseball player. I mean, it's just. It's brutal. And as an agent, you know, people call me and say, hey, I noticed that this team has an off day on Monday. You know, can we get him down to the get down to this to do this charity event or to whatever? And I'm like, it's not an off day on Monday. It's a travel day, you know, or whatever it is. And so, so as an agent, that's a great question. As an agent, what do you tell the average fan? I mean, you and I are friends, so I, I kind of know the ins and outs a little bit more than maybe someone else. But what do you tell the regular guy who says, well, listen, they travel on a charter plane. They get a masseuse at every, you know, massages. Well, and they I have think- five-course meals, and, they, and they're staying in five-star hotels. Well, what do you mean they can't play 162 games or Well, I whatever? mean, you know, have you ever, you know, have you ever gone on a trip and traveled and come back? I mean, I just got back from Las Vegas. I, I, I feel like crap. I'm just- I've been I've had a cold and haven't had had low energy and you know that's for for a weekend you know for a few, you know it was I didn't sleep much but but uh you know <laughs> but like you know but I mean that's what it is I mean it's a grind it is brutal being on the road being away from your family um you know being away from you know the things you love um you know not and it's it's never it never ends and yes they're paid well for it but it doesn't lessen the fact that it's 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 a tough life to live and yeah okay it's great to be in a five-star hotel but i think most people would rather be in their own bed and not you know when i i've been where i've been traveling i i'll wake up and not even know where i you know sometimes you wake up you don't even know where you are you know or you go, i've gone to the wrong i've gone to the wrong hotel room i'm like oh you know 1428 and i go to the room I'm like well, this isn't my room that was last that was last city <laughs> you know, or whatever it was like, it's crazy. So it's, it's a lot. And I don't think the average person probably is too sympathetic, but I don't, you know, to me, a human being, it's difficult to 
be able to live that life. Um, and I think people don't realize that. So I do think the time off or whatever, give a few days to deprogram or clear your head, go to practice for a few hours and then, you know, go home and, you know, play with your kid or take your kid to the park or the amusement park or whatever it is. So they won't do, they won't do this. Right. But maybe the, maybe the answer is go back to the one game elimination. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Look, if you don't win your division and you have to play a one game playoff to advance, so be it. Look, at the division. end of the day, it's, you know, there's so many different ways you could look at it. Um, you know, baseball is, you said before, baseball and football are completely different. Football, the better team is going to win a high percentage of the games. Baseball, it's not going to win a high percentage of the game. The, a terrible team plays a great team a 100 times, they're probably going to win 40 games. Yeah. Okay? 40 out of 100. That's not, you know, in football, that will not happen. That will not happen. It just correct. will not happen. You know, yes, the, you know, whoever it is, pick pick the team that had the upset or whatever um, and say, all right, but if the, you know, if the, the you know, whoever's the worst team in football right now, Carolina – if Carolina plays the 49ers 16 times or 17 times, they're probably going to win twice. Probably you know what I mean? Right. That's a much lower percentage than in baseball. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, um, you know, that is, it's difficult. So again, I think, look, the mission is being accomplished. They're making money and the revenues are there. That's what they're doing. Does that mean the best team is going to be holding the trophy up at the end of October, early November? No, it clearly does not because, these teams, if they were the really the best team, they would be dominating the regular season as well as, you know, it's it's the hottest team. It's the team was putting it together. And, it, it, you know, the Phillies came close last year. They might do it again this year. Yeah. I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. I don't think the Diamondbacks are done. And certainly the Astros, you know, are have the heart of a champion. So I wouldn't count them out either. I wouldn't so, count them out. I agree with you. Although I still, my pick, my pick in the National League was always the Phillies because I I just had this gut feeling and I, they, they have this swagger about them, right? No, no doubt. But and, Lou, and, and the way can, I look at it, Giannis becomes a different player. You know. Yeah, no question. But Lou, in the regular everybody season. look, everybody look, everybody is is you know a different player until they're not a different player. Castellanos is hot now. And then he goes, you know, he goes over 12 and all of a sudden he's not hot anymore. And what happened to the Philly swagger? You know what I mean? Anything can happen. It's baseball. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see the rest of these series and how they play out. And then certainly when they get to the World Series, um, yeah, man, it's going to be great. So um, what's your prediction right now? I'm going to say that I think Texas is going to win the World Series. I have a funny yeah. feeling about that team. Um, and I just they they have a nice, nice lineup. Um I think the pitch has been good. And you know, I like the back end of the bullpen. Um, and you know what? Um I I I happen to have a lot of respect for all the managers um that are left right now. Um, I think they've all done an amazing job, but I mean, again, I'm an old school guy. I think Thompson's an old school guy. Dusty obviously is an old school guy, and Boach <laughs> is definitely an old school Boach, guy. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, Tori, uh, I don't really know as well, um, but Tori's done an amazing job um, with that team, and I think that's certainly a team on the rise. And Mike Hazen and that whole group has really done a nice job of you know putting that team in this in this great position. Um, so I give him a lot of credit um, and and that whole front office. But um, at the end of the day. Um, I just feel like Texas is just for whatever reason they're on fire now. They just seem to have it clicking. I love uh, Simeon. He's one of my he's one of my favorite players to watch play. He's he's just such a good all around player. I mean, he did something the other day when Altuve, you know, thought the ball was going to drop and he had to run back and he he was watching just watching his eyes, watching to make sure he retouched the base. Just such a high yeah. IQ baseball play, and that you know, little things like that. That's how, that's how you win World Series. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I just find it fascinating that Aroldo Chapman is on that team, and he still hasn't cost him a game. <laughs> yeah, but he has a different role now, and I think he's kind of a, got a different um, approach. And it's just fascinating to see, and it's exciting to watch. So I'm looking forward to. 
the remainder. And, uh, you know, we'll hopefully we'll talk more about it next week. But I think, Lou, we're out of time. Um, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to add, but um, Miami Minute, the Miami, Miami Minute, Minute is postponed. I'm very dis- <laughs> depressed. They lost two in a row. I don't want to get, I don't want to even talk. Oh, about man. It. Oh, yeah. So you're no like Miami Dion. Minute you're this like, week. You're like Dion, you've lost a few in a row. Uh, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put the flag at half mast for one week and uh, see if they can rebound against Clemson on Saturday. Wow, that's a big, that's a big task. That's a big task. Yeah, that's so. a big task. Anyway, Chris. Always fun, my brother. All right. Sounds good, Lou. Thanks, everybody, for watching.